Welcome to another fun video and today we are going to be making this cute little basket and I'm going to show you two different ways to make this. It will be the same exact pattern, however we will just be changing the thickness of, a yarn, of the yarn using a fun technique that I love to use. So this basket is one that was made with a single strand. We're going to do one that's made with three strands but we're going to work from one ball. This is a nice base with a lace top that kind of overlays. I really like it. I made this for my cute little puppy and her treats, but now I'm using it as a pencil holder, so now I need to make another one. Um, let's talk about the supplies for this fun project. For this project, I love using a cotton yarn for baskets. It just is a bit better for holding up the shape of the basket so that it can be usable. I use Dishy from We Crochet. You can find my affiliate links in the pattern and on my blog. And this one is Eggplant and this one is Lilac Mist. I thought these were really, really cute uh, colors for this basket. And I also, for this small size, use the size G hook. This is a furl streamline. It's one of my favorites. I love the streamline series from furls. So let's talk about how we're going to make a basket today that's going to be a little bit bigger and using three strands at once. For that project, I am still using Dishy yarn because I absolutely love Dishy. And this, I will be using this dark gray, which is called the silver and this white. And then I will be switching to a larger hook. I'm going to be using the P hook, which is a 10 millimeter. This is also a furl streamline in the wood and it's great for these type of projects. So let's get started with the base of this basket. So a lot of times when we talk about working three strands at once, we often think of grabbing three balls of yarn, grabbing the ends of each ball, and then dealing with a few tangles as we're pulling from three balls at once. That is not what we're going to be doing today. We are going to go ahead and push these other two balls aside, and we are going to work from one ball of yarn, but we still are going to make it a chunk of yarn by using three strands at once, but we're gonna do that from one, one ball. To do this, we're going to create an S. If you can create your S pretty wide, so a very like long wide S. So we start here and we just create the S. Then we pinch down from the center and now we have three strands together. We're going to treat this as one strand the way that we work it. So we're gonna pretend that this has just been smushed together and combined to be one strand. Now I'm going to start by creating the magic ring or magic circle. And I'm, once again, I'm treating this yarn as um, the three strands is just like working it as one ball, one strand of yarn. So now I'm going to be working into this circle. We're going to start by doing eight single crochets into the circle. But watch what happens as we work, we will find that we start to run out of yarn here. So our three strands ends, we're left with this loop and then the strand that goes to our ball of yarn. We simply put our fingers through this loop, grab that extra strand, and pull. And if you notice, then this creates three strands again. I like to get a lot of length every time I do this, just so I don't have to do it quite as often. But now, as you can see, we've got three strands again, and we've got quite a bit of length of yarn to work from. So every single time you come to that, where you're starting to run out of the three strands, it's easy to create three strands again. So I'm going to go ahead and single crochet eight stitches into this magic ring. Now that I've worked this around, I can go ahead and pull my ring slightly tight. I don't like to pull it all the way yet, but I'm going to start my next round and we are going to be working continuously so we won't be joining. So it's important as you start this next round, which we are going to be doing two single crochets into each stitch around, we will want to go ahead and mark that first stitch so we know when the beginning of our round. So now I'm gonna do the second single crochet. And as you notice, I'm starting to run out of the three strands here again. So I simply grab through this loop and pull it through. And now I've got three strands again to keep going. So for this round, for round two, we are going to single crochet two stitches into every single stitch around. And once you've kind of got this round done, you can go ahead and you can tighten down that ring and have it be 
less of a hole. So now at the end of round two, we've increased to 16 stitches. And for round three, we are going to do two single crochets into the first stitch. And we're going to go ahead and mark the first stitch of the round. And then we are going to single crochet into the next stitch. And we're going to repeat that. We're going to be doing two single crochets into the next stitch, then a single crochet. And we'll repeat that all the way around and it will increase by eight stitches. So at the end of this round, we will have 24 stitches. And then for round five, we're going to move that stitch marker. We will do two single crochets into that first stitch. And then single crochet into the next two stitches. And that will be our repeat around. Be sure to mark that first stitch in the round. And then repeat where it's two single crochets into the next stitch. And then single crochet into the next two stitches. And repeat that around. So at the end of round four, you will have 32 stitches. And now for round five. We are going to do, once again, two single crochets into that first stitch. And I can already tell I need to get some more yarn here, so I'll just quickly do that. And then be sure to mark that first stitch. And now we are going to single crochet into the next three stitches. And that will be our repeat around, two single crochet into the next stitch and then single crochet into the next three. At the end of round five, we have 40 stitches. And now for round six, where we are going to be doing two single crochets into the first, and then as you probably guessed, single crocheting into the next four. So at the end of round six, you will have 48 stitches. So once again, our repeat is to two single crochet into the first and then single crochet into the next four and we will repeat that around. So it's going to simply be to single crochet in every single stitch around without increasing. I want to take a note here and let you know that if you want to change the size of your basket, like if you want a basket that's a bit wider to fit more things, you would simply continue to increase in the same way we have before, increasing by eight stitches per round. So you can increase by eight stitches every round and stop at whatever point you would like for this basket because the lace work on top is an eight stitch repeat, so it will work out. So if this is where I'm going to do as the pattern's instructed, but I just wanted to know if you want something larger, that's very simple to do. I also want to know, see the difference between the size of the bottom of this basket, which I haven't done that last, that round six yet. This is already quite larger, even though it's the same instructions, simply by changing the thickness of the yarn and the crochet hook. If you want to use different yarns that you already have in your stash, baskets are a great place to test that out. The gauge isn't quite as important for these since they are not fitted items. So you can play with it. See what tension you like within your yarn, what hook works for that, and what yarn works for that. These are great stash busters. So we've done seven rounds, and now it's time for round eight. For round eight, I'm going to be working the stitches into the back loop only. That's not inserting through underneath all these strands, it's through that back part only of that top V. The reason why I like to do this is it's helpful like as we turn the basket to work, I feel that it makes a nicer edge that causes that to be flatter and less rounded, a bit more sharp. So what we will do for round eight is we're going to skip the first stitch and then we are going to single crochet two into the next stitch. And I'm working this in the back loops only. I'm going to go ahead and mark that first stitch. And now I'm going to repeat that around. Skip the next stitch, do two single crochets into the next. and then repeat that all the way around. Skip a stitch, two single crochets into the next. And as I come to round eight, I'll be doing two single crochets into the last stitch. 
And now we're ready for round nine. Now, as you notice, because we did the single crochets in the back loop on the previous row, it kind of flips it up. This is the right side. I've kind of turned my work. This will be the inside of the basket and it's kind of flipping up here, which is great. Now to start round nine, we are going to be looking at these first two stitches in the round. We're going to be looking at the second stitch here and this bar, the second side of that V comes across. We're going to insert our hook under those, those loops, which for this is three, but for if you aren't doing this, um, this type of yarn is just one strand. Then we're going to insert our hook into the skipped stitch from the round below. Yarn over and pull up a loop, pull that loop through that bar, and then complete the single crochet. And we're going to do that again. We're going to do two single crochets into this space. And that's the first two stitches of the round. Go ahead and mark the first stitch and then we're going to do that again. So we look at the next two stitches and we find that slanted bar on the front of that second stitch. And then we insert our hook into the skip stitch from two rounds below, pull up a loop, single crochet, and then do it again. So we're doing two stitches into each of these spots. Let's do that again. We are going to find the left slanted bar of the second stitch insert our hook, insert into the skip stitch, pull up a loop, finish that single crochet and repeat it again. And we're going to do that all the way around. Now for round 10 is simply repeating the steps we've done before. And that will be our repeats for the round building the heights, the height of the basket. So I'm going to move my stitch marker for just a second. And we're going to look at these first two stitches again. And I feel like it's easier this time to see that second line of the second stitch. So same thing, I'm going to insert my hook under that line and then into the stitch from two rounds below that we skipped, yarn over and pull that loop through and then finish that single crochet and go ahead and place your stitch marker. Now we'll want to do two into this spot, so we're going to repeat that again. And same thing for this next stitch. We'll go to that second, that second single crochet here. We'll look at that left line and we'll insert our hook underneath there and into the skip stitch from the two rounds below and then pull up a loop and single crochet and then repeat again. We will do this around and around until you have the height of the basket that you would like. So just keep going around and around, build up that height to the basket you like, or follow the amount of rounds in the instructions. Now, as you keep going on this basket and you're building up that height, there is a good chance you are going to run out of your first skein or ball of yarn. To join a new one, it's simply the same as anything else. You treat this as a strand. If you need to cut it because it's a little bit uneven at the end, you can. And then you go ahead and you start your new strand of yarn, which will start the same way as we did before. We're going to make an S like this and pinch it. And now we have our three strands. We can simply start working from this as a new strand of yarn like you would with anything else and pull it through and keep on going. Welcome back. It's a new day for me and I've finished the height of this basket that I like. This is about 19 rounds. And the reason why I really like this stitch for a basket is because it's really thick and it really holds up that basket edge well. I also use this stitch on my Easter baskets. So if you like it, you should check out those too. So let's get started on this lace top. For this top, I'm switching to this lighter color of Dishy and I am still using our technique of um, using three strands from one ball. So for this very first stitch, I'm going to go ahead and do a slip stitch to change the colors. And this will also help right here to prevent a little bit, bit of color jogging as we start with this new color. So now I'm going to be doing a chain one and then single crocheting in the same stitch. 
You can go ahead and place a stitch marker for this round. We know when we get back to this color, that's where we end, but good habits. And then we're simply going to single crochet into every single stitch around. So I've joined my very first stitch of round one, and now it's time to start round two. And round two is going to be worked into these front loops only. What that will do is it will help this lace fold over the front of this basket nicely. So I'm going to start by working a stacked single crochet into that front loop only. This will count as our very first double crochet stitch, and I'm going to go ahead and mark that stitch as the first stitch in this round. Now I'm going to double crochet into the front loop of the very next stitch. And now we are going to chain five. We will skip the next three stitches. So one, two, three, and then we are going to double crochet working in that front loop for the next five stitches. So we'll double crochet five. And our repeat for this round will be to chain five skip three, double crochet five, working those front loops. And we'll do that all the way around until we get to the last three stitches of the round. So now that I've worked my way back towards the beginning, I've chained five and I'm skipping one, two, three, and then I have three stitches left in this round. So I'm going to go ahead and do a double crochet into each of those stitches to finish off this round. And then I'm going to join to the very first stitch of the round with a slip stitch. And now we are ready for round three. Now for round three, we aren't going to do any stitches into this very first one. We're going to go ahead and just start working our repeat. So to do this, we are going to do four double crochets, chain two, and four more double crochets all into this chain space. So we're going to go right into that. We're going to double crochet four, and, but we're going to go ahead and mark our very first double crochet in this round. So I've done four double crochets. I'll chain two. And now I'm going to do four more double crochets all into this chain space. And now we're going to skip the next two double crochets and do a single crochet and skip the next two double crochets. And then we're back to our repeat of doing four double crochets, chain two, four double crochets. We skip two double crochets and single crochet in the next and then skip two double crochets. So repeat that around until the very end. So at the end of round three, we're going to join to the first stitch in this round, which is that double crochet. And then we are going to turn, this will be the only times we turn will be on round four and we're going to probably turn back for round five. So we've turned our work and we're going to be working in the opposite direction. Now for the very first stitch, we're going to be working into the stitch that we just joined to. We are going to be doing a stacked single crochet, but we're going to do a decrease as well. So I'm going to start this stitch by simply doing the single crochet part of it inserting my hook back into that horizontal bar, pulling it up, 
And now we're going to go to the next double crochet. So we're going to skip this single crochet. We're going to go to this double crochet. And that is what we are going to decrease. We do a yarn over first. We're going to do this like a double crochet. We're going to decrease this together. So we're doing a stack single crochet two together, but we're decreasing the first two double crochets stitches in this round, skipping that center single crochet. Then we're going to go ahead and we're definitely going to mark this stitch. And now we're going to chain one, skip one, double crochet. chain one, skip one, and now we're going to do two double crochets or a double crochet, chain two, double crochet into this chain space. We're going to do a double crochet, chain two, and double crochet into that chain space. Then we are going to chain one, smooth this around here so I can see it, chain one, skip one, double crochet and then we chain one, skip one, and the next two stitches here are the ones that we will double crochet to together. So we're going to be skipping this stitch and the next two double crochets, ignoring that center single crochet, we are going to double crochet those together. And now we're going to repeat those steps around. So this will be a chain one, skip one, double crochet, and then chain one, skip one, and do a double crochet, chain two, double crochet all into that chain space, then chain one, skip one, and double crochet. But first, I'm going to grab some more yarn here. And then we are going to do our decrease skipping that center single crochet. So we're going to chain one, skip one, and then double crochet those double crochet stitches together. Repeat that around until you get back to the beginning. So as I work back around here, I've done my double crochet, chain two, double crochet in the chain space, and I've chained one. I'm going to skip one and double crochet. And then I'm going to chain one, skip one, and then this is where we will slip stitch to the very first stitch in the round. We're going to go ahead and move that stitch marker and we are going to turn for round five. For round five, we are going to start with chaining one and then we are going to work a single crochet into the next chain space. And I'm going to go ahead and mark that stitch. And then we're going to chain two. Now we're going to repeat that again. We're going to do a single crochet in the next chain space and then chain two. And now in the next chain two space, we will be doing a single crochet, chain four, and then single crochet. Now we're going to chain two, single crochet in the next chain one space, and chain two, and then repeat that again, single crochet in the next chain one space, and then chain two.
And now we're just going to keep repeating that all the way around, but we're single crocheting in the chain one spaces and chaining two. And then in the chain two spaces, we're doing a single crochet, chain four, and single crochet. Repeat that all the way around back to the beginning. Now that I'm back at the beginning, I'm going to do my final chain two, and then I can slip stitch to the first stitch in the round, and round five is complete, which means I am finished with the basket. So it's time to fasten off and weave in our ends. And I will tell you for some of these ends on the inside, you'll find that you have a loop on one of the strands. A lot of times I cut those because it's easier to just weave in the three strands that way. So go ahead and weave in your ends and we're going to come back and talk about optional tassels. Now let's talk about size difference here, even though we use the exact same instructions for these baskets. Whenever we change the gauge of something, it really changes the size. So we changed the hook and the weight of the yarn. We basically took it from a worsted weight to a very bulky weight yarn by using three strands at once. On my first basket, I liked putting these tassels on the points. I think it's really a cute detail. Had I made this basket a bit taller, I might put some tassels on here, but I like this one as is, so I'm going to leave it. So this is the difference between using one strand versus three. It's something really fun to do for patterns, but only for patterns that are not fitted. This needs to only happen for patterns where you have a lot of flexibility, like a basket. So whether you made a small basket or a large basket, I really hope you enjoy this project. Check out the other free patterns on my blog as well as my premium patterns and be sure to hit that subscribe button and come back soon for more projects. Enjoy the rest of your day.